lumalapit at pumapasok sa atin. Hindi lang sa loob ng mga walls ng isang city, kundi mahalaga sa ating isip at sa ating puso. If you prepare the way in a physical uh, dimension by uh, spreading clothes and textiles and branches on the road, how do you prepare the way of the Lord to your heart, to your mind? Because the true kingdom of God is within us. Sinabi ni Jesus, the kingdom of God is within you, it's in you, and of course it's in your heart, in your mind, among all the other parts of our anatomy. How do we prepare our minds so that God, in many dimensions and levels of teaching, can really be with us and be in us? Maraming pulpit messages, parang spiritual milk. Inang tawag dyan ni Paul. Pangsanggol. Hindi nagmamature. Paulit-ulit na lang. Hindi pang mature at hindi nagpapa-mature. Kasi ayaw naman ng marami sa solid food. Ayaw nila sa mahirap maintindihan. Ayaw ng mga tao sa nosebleed. Ang gusto na lang yung dati ng dating laging madali na. Meron pa nga nagsasabi, Pastor, miss na miss na po namin ang mga jokes nyo. Yung, yung mga jokes nyo nung araw, i-joke nyo naman uli. Ganon. Hindi na ba tayo mag-grow? Maganda naman, pero hindi natin pinaplano na mag-joke para magtawanan tayong ganyan at ma-entertain. Dapat mag-grow. 1 Corinthians 3.2, sabi ni Paul, Gatas ang ibinigay ko sa inyo noon, at hindi matigas na pagkain, sapagat hindi ninyo kaya yon. Subalit hanggang ngayon, ay hindi pa rin ninyo kaya ang matigas na pagkain. Proverbs 2, 3 to 5, Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Ano daw dapat ang gawin natin? Sa paghahanap ng karunungan ng Diyos, call out for it, cry aloud, look for it, search for it, more than you would search for a physical treasure. At sabi naman ni Paul, I too was a spiritual child. Naintindihan ko naman kayo kung hindi kayo makakain ng solid food. Ganyan din naman ako dati. Pero sabi niya sa 1 Corinthians 13.11, Nung ako'y bata pa, meaning in spirit, ako'y nagsasalita, nag-iisip at nangangatwirang tulad ng bata, in spirit. Ngunit, ngayong ako'y mayroon ng sapat na gulang, iniwan ko na ang mga asal ng bata. At ganun din dapat ang ginagawa natin sa ating spiritual growth. Let's grow up in understanding. Let's grow in spirit. Let's have some solid food. Today, let's have some alternative, integrative reading of Scripture. Mula nung ang mga theologies na niyakap ng mga simbahan ay nabuo, libong taon na ang lumipas. Daan-daang taon na ang lumipas. Napakarami ng bagong kaalaman na dapat ma-integrate into the reading, understanding, and interpretation of Scripture. Dapat ang pagbabasa natin ngayon ay higit na sa pagbabasa ng mga naon ng generations. Kasi marami ng available knowledge to us now that was not available then. Marami ng tools na pwedeng madagdag sa pagbubulat dati ng salita ng Diyos. Kasi marami ng kaalaman ng taong nadagdag sa ating vocabulary. Sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, mayroong usual, traditional standards. Yung mga naging monumento na inuka na sa bato na ito yung theology, tapos walang gagalaw pero meron ding dapat na alternative or the other reading kasi kahit man mga theologians hindi nagkakasundo-sundo sa iisang kahulugan ng binabasa nila at interpret so dapat hindi lang isa ang tanaw mo meron ka alternative na pananaw in, fact, in other words, kahit pa nga yung kontrang pananaw, consider mo rin yan kung talagang you are searching for understanding so, dapat may alternative reading. At dapat meron ding integrative reading. Ini-integrate mo yung dati na, yung standard na pananaw, 
at isinasama mo yung the other reading at pinag synthesize mo sila, humahanap ka ng magandang ground kung saan lahat sila ay makakahanap ng peaceful situation and peaceful location. And then synthesize. Pag nasuri mo ang mga dati ng paniniwala at interpretation, hindi naman naiiba yung salita ng Diyos eh. Pero yung pag-interpret, pag-unawa, pag-apply, dapat ipinafactor mo na yung mga da- bagong alam ng kabihasnan ng mga tao para nagle-level up. Sabi nga, we grow from glory to glory. At sabi ni Paul, I'm no longer a child. Now I want to treat all of this spiritual journey as a mature individual. Today, we will attempt a traditional, alternative, and integrative reading of cherished scriptures. At matapos ang lahat, bahala kayo kung anong gusto nyo. Yung, ay, gusto ko pa rin yung traditional. Ay, gusto ko yung alternative. Ay, gusto ko yung integrative. Ay, nasynthesize ko. Wow, naunawa ko siya. Tapag dugtong-dugtong in a higher level, edi maganda sana. Psalm 19, 1 to 4. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day, they pour, pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Pag tinignan mo daw ang kalangitan, pag minatyagan mo, inobserbahan ang mga heavenly bodies, marami silang ituturo. Hindi daw sila nagsasalita sa human language, pero wala silang tigil ng pagtuturo. They put forth speech. Their voice goes out into all the earth. Nakipag-usap na ba tayo sa mga heavenly bodies? Hinayaan na ba natin kausapin tayo ng Diyos through the stars and the planets that He had made through the movement of the heavenly bodies? No. Learn about God from the heavens, from the skies, hindi lang from pulpits, hindi lang from classrooms. No one learn about God from the handiworks of God in the skies and in all the earth. Not only from conventional theology, but by observing all the things that God had made. Because God speaks to us through creation. Hindi lang through religion. Through science then. Through all the branches of knowledge. Because the glory of God fills the earth. Ang pamagat ng ating pag-aaral, intro pa lang lahat yun. Kaya humandahan da kayo. Mahabaan ito. Life, spirit, and love. Ano ang mga kaugnayan ng life at ng spirit tapos ng love? Babalikan natin, re-reviewin ang mga basic truths of life that we see in Scripture. There is one Creator Life giver and sustainer, no other than God. The spirit of Creator God is in all living creatures. The more we understand how the universe works, the more we understand that it is a grand unifying, that is a, it has a grand unifying design. God reveals Himself through His work, through His handiwork. For instance, the preciseness of the universe exhibits logic that it is designed and is not a random accident. Nature points to God. Kaya mga highly spiritual are nature lovers, plant lovers, animal lovers. Kasi hindi man malinaw sa kanila kung bakit. Kasi nararamdaman nila ang Espiritu ng Diyos na gumagalaw sa lahat ng buhay na bagay at sa lahat ng nilikha ng Diyos. Know God through nature. Unlock the messages of the divine through natural objects. Now, all constants in nature are very precise. 
Bakit nakakalipad ang mga aeroplano at nakaka-landing unless nakakaroon ng mga iba, konting mishaps? Kasi na-compute na nila lahat ng pwedeng malaman tukos sa hangin, sa paglipad, sa pag-landing, direksyon ng mga hangin, pag-ikot ng planeta. Kaya ang laki-laki ng kalangitan, nagla-landing ka sa airport na pupuntahan mo. Kasi hindi na iiba ang laws of nature. Bakit na-ooperahan ka, na isasara uli ang iyong katawan at gumagaling ka under normal circumstances? Ha? Dahil alam na ng siyensya kung paano gagalaw ang dugo, paano natutuyo ang mga tahi, paano binubuksan ang mga parts of our body, at kung paano isasara uli. Hindi yun naiiba. For instance, the strength of gravity, the speed of light, the energy of the atoms, etc. are very precise that if the value of even one of these constants is changed ever so slightly, the universe would be thrown off balance and will cease to exist. Colossians 1, 16-17 For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things have been created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. Of course, this refers to Jesus, who is the personification of the will and the love of God. Lahat daw ay nilikha para sa Kanya, nilikha sa pamamagitan Niya. At Siya ang may hawak ng lahat, kaya hindi nagkakahiwahiwalay at nagkakagulo-gulo ang lahat. Knowing God through natural designs of creation and through natural law is an imperative. We need to know God, not only through religious teachings and rituals, but also through the work of nature, because nature was created by God. Amos 4.13, He who reveals his thoughts to mankind, the Lord God Almighty, is his name. So, laging nagre-reveal ang Diyos sa lahat. Kaya huwag niyong ilimit ang pakikinig. Dapat nakikinig ka, nanonood ka, nagmamatsyag ka, kasi kinakausap tayo ng may likha. Explore alternative and integrative readings of verses aided by nature and by science. Kasi nga tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, ang dami-dami ng alam ngayon ng tao na hindi alam ng mga lolo natin, hindi alam ng lolo nila, hindi alam ng previous generations, bakit natin ikukulong ang mga isip natin sa napakatagal na napakalumang mga kaalaman samantalang marami ng bago na pwedeng magamit para lalong maunawa ang hiwaga at kapangyarihan ng Diyos. God's Spirit, sometimes called consciousness, is everywhere. Science suggests that consciousness originated in the universe and that our brains are not separate from it. The brain serves like an antenna that receives this information. Kaya mahalaga yung tinatawag nilang quiet time. Kasi yung brain mo parang antenna yan, makakatanggap yan ng mga signals from God. Kaya kailangan mo quiet. Para marinig mo, para malaman mo, para tahimik ka. Hindi yung nagbasa ka ng verses, may guide pa ako, ano yung pagpapray mo, tapos sabihin mo, time ka na. Kasi binasa mo yung guide na sinulat ng kapwa mo tao. Dapat mayroon totoong quiet time. That you could hear your mind think that there's space for the voice of God to be heard. We connect with God through our brain, through thought. Kaya prepare ye the, ye the way. How do you prepare your mind as the way na pupuntahan ng Diyos? Open your mind. Nakakapagtaka kung bakit may mga relihiyosong ipinagmamalaki na sila ay sarado de kandado. Paano papasok ang liwanag kung sarado? Isinasara mo lang ang iyong isip kung takot ka sa liwanag. Ipinipikit mo ang iyong mata kung ayaw mong masilaw ng liwanag. Pero kung talagang gusto mong pasukan ka ng liwanag, dapat nakabukas ang mata. And even optometrists will tell you, ophthalmologists will tell you, na pag binuksan mo yung mata, pumapasok yung light. And the whole process begins. Buksan ang isip. Huwag matakot sa mga bagong nadirinig. 
kaya man naman niya i-process. Dahan-dahan kung hindi mo kaya mabilis. Pero huwag magsasara ng isip sa bagong kalaman. God, the Spirit of God, as consciousness, is in every conscious living creature. Luke 17, 20 to 21. Once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Nor will people say, Here it is, or There it is. Because the kingdom of God is in your midst, in you, inside you. Napagbulay-bulaya naman natin talaga yung sinabi ni Jesus that the kingdom of God is in you. Kasi kung habul ka pa rin ang habul sa mga pilgrimages para magdasal do sa bundok na yun, magdasal dito doon, hindi mo pa naiintindihan that the kingdom of God is in you. Pagka hindi kayo makapag-Bible study, huy, walang nag-authorize sa atin, walang pumayag, kailangan may authority sa papayag, hindi mo naiintindihan that the kingdom of God is in you. Dala-dala mo yan, walang kailangan mag-authorize sa'yo para maunawa at ma-enjoy mo yung kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst, in you? Ikaw ang templo ng Diyos. And what particular part of our body is the real temple? Our mind. Dahil doon siya nakaupo, doon siya nagahari, unless iba ang pinagahari natin sa ating mind. Pag pinagahari mo yung tako, tapos sasabihin mo, Jesus is Lord, nasan yung, ano no, nasan yung synthesis ng dalawang magkabanggang ideya na yun? Jesus is Lord, Lord mo siya, pero may takot, edi ang takot ang Lord mo. Yung Jesus is my Lord, tapos maingitera ka, o kaya mayabang, o kaya makasarili, paano mo naging Lord si Jesus? Sa salita. Pero, if your mind is the kingdom of God, He is king in your mind, yung gusto ng Diyos, expressed through Jesus, ha? hindi expressed through the Pharisees. Yung gusto ng Diyos, as revealed by Jesus, yun ang iisipin at gagawin mo. At pag ginawa mo yun, magbubunga ngayon yung pagiging Lord ni Jesus sa iyong puso, ang bunga, peace and rest. Magkakadugtong yan eh. Kailangan lang talagang pag-isipan. Acts 7, 48-49 However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Eh, Pastor, paano po yung sinasabi nila may construction, ipapagawa ang bahay ng Diyos? Pang fundraising lang yun para mabagbag ka at ibigay mo pati hikaw mo sa mga makabili ng mga hollow blocks. Pero walang bahay ang Diyos, kundi ang iyong isip at ang iyong puso. Well, pwede tayong gumawa ng building, why not? Hindi naman masama. Para doon tayo magkita-kita, hindi tayo mabasa ng ulan, hindi tayo lumubog sa baha, hindi tayo mahanginan, kung ayaw nating mahanginan. Pero, huwag sabihin bahay ng Diyos, walang ganun. Because tayo ang tahanan ng Diyos. Tayo ang bulwagan ng Panginoon. Hindi ko ano-ano mga lugar. Tayo. What kind of house will you build for me? Sabi ng Diyos. Or where will my resting place be? God is everywhere. Every creation points to the Creator. Know God in creation. Seek God everywhere in everything. Yung iba naman baligtad, ang hinahanap yung demonyo. Kaya yung demonyo, nasa tasa niya, nasa kapin niya, nasa katiklop niyang punda. Dan to dan, demonyo everywhere. Kasi kung anong hinahanap mo, yun naman ang matatagpuan mo. Hindi ba sabi ni so seek and you will find. You seek the devil, you will find the devil. Kaya nagiging puro takot ang laman ng iyong buhay. Kasi yun ang laman ng isip, ng conversation. Kung hinahanap mo, sakit, lahat ng usapan nyo tungkol sa sakit. Paligsahan kayo, pataasan ng presyon, pataasan ng blood sugar. E di yan talaga ang mangnanahan sa inyo kasi yan ang laman ng isip mo eh. Sino ang pinapayagan natin maghari sa ating thought? Psalm 139, 7 to 8. 
Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. So sa kapupunta na wala ang Diyos. The spirit of creator God fills all creation and creatures. Kaya sabi niya, kung anong ginagawa mo sa kapwa mo, ginagawa mo sa akin, lalo na sa mga kapuspalad. So, hindi yung napakareligyoso mo, tapos ang lupit-lupit mo sa mga kawawa at kapuspalad. Hindi yun totoo. Kabalintunaan yun. Walang synthesis yung dalawang counterpoints of view. So, kailangan hinahanap daw natin because God is everywhere. John 4, 20-23 our Samaritan ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews, sabi nung babae, claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. O ayan, paligsahan ha, kung saan ang mas tamang worship, sa Gershim o sa Zion, sa Jerusalem o sa Samaria. Sabi nung babae, kayo, iba kiniklaim nyo, Jerusalem, kami dito sa bundok namin. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. This mountain or Zion don't count for anything. Samaria or Jerusalem don't count for anything. Yet a time has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, meaning in the mind. Not in any particular location or place, but in the position of your heart. Sa takbo ng yung isip, doon ka magwa-worship. Not location-based, for there are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Napaka-importante. Now, another basic truth, creation and the works of God. Psalm 111, 2. Great are the works of the Lord, they are pondered by all who delight in them. So, dapat talagang pag-isip-isipan. Job 12, 7-9 But ask the animals, and they will teach you. Or the birds in the sky, and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth, and it will teach you. Or let the fish in the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? Why are we going through all these verses? Because we just go through them and not really stop and ponder what they mean. But they are there all along. Sinasabi, kinakausap ka ng Diyos through all creation. Makinig ka. To love God and understand Him is to know how everything works. And this is what science does, which many religions demonize. Habang naghahanap ng knowledge of the Creator, yung science, Pinipigil naman ng maraming religions dahil gusto nila manatili sa mystery ang lahat ng bagay. Science could be God's last prophet. Because true science does nothing but really point to a creator God. Hindi kayang iwasan ng any scientific mind or inquiry na meron talagang designer. Hindi aksidente ang buhay. Isaiah 40.12 Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand or with the breath of his hand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? God! And of course, known by and through science. Isama ninyo mga kapatid ang scientific inquiry sa paglapit sa Diyos. Hindi yan magkalaban. Lalo mo lang nalalaman at kikita na merong grand designer ang lahat-lahat. Another basic truth that the spirit, sometimes called information, comes from God, resides in man while man is physically alive and then returns to God when the body dies. So yung espiritu ng Diyos, Pagka naging buong tao ka, ay nagiging kaisa mo, pero pag namatay na ang iyong katawan, ay bumabalik yun sa Diyos. Quantum mechanics law says that information cannot be destroyed. It is eternal. 
when matter is destroyed, its information remain in the universe. So, parallel yung sinasabi ng science at sinasabi ng scripture that your spirit is indestructible, that you are eternal. At sabi ni Leonardo da Vinci, artist and scientist, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. The spirit of creator God infills and infuses every incarnated creature which assumes individual identities during each one's earthly and physical lifetime. Ano na naman yung nosebleed na yan? Yung spirito ng Diyos na sumasapi at dumadapo sa iyo habang buhay ka dito sa body na ito, individual ka, pero pag namatay yung katawan, bumabalik na yun sa Diyos. Yun lang yun. Panandalian lang yung identity na yan na magkahalo yung katawan at yung spirito Pero yung katawan, bumabalik sa lupa. Yung espiritu, bumabalik sa Diyos. At maraming mga kakambal na tanong yan. Hindi naman natin kailangan halungkatin lahat ngayon. John 6, 63, Jesus, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. Hindi natin babaliwalay na ating katawan. Ang ibig sabihin lang nun, sandali lang yung katawan na yan. In terms of time, it is the spirit that is eternal. The more we understand nature and life, we realize that its purpose, listen church, is to preserve itself and to preserve other life forms as well. Maraming laging pa-profound na tanong eh. What is life for? What is the purpose of life? Huwag mo i-confine lang sa religious meaning. Ibig sabihin, mamundo ka at mag-vision at kung ano-ano. That is good to do. Pero huwag mo lang ilimit doon ang ibig sabihin ng life. Because... Pag tiningnan mo sa malayo, the purpose of life, based on the laws of creation and nature, is for life to preserve itself and to preserve life, other life forms as well. So, pinagsasama dito yung biology and ecology. No? Even in the so-called competition, actually, what is important is to keep the balance, the biologic, biological and ecological balance of things. Sasabihin mo, ay, kawawa naman yung uh, usa kinain ng leyon. Pero kawawa naman yung leyon kung wala siyang makain usa, di ba? So, God created it that way. So, totoo nun, hindi naman namamatay yung usa. You want to be romantic? Kasi pag kinain siya ng leyon, muli siyang nabubuhay sa loob ng leyon. Nagiging siyang eternal. Hindi mo lang nga nakikita kasi leyon yung nakikita mo. Pero pag yung leyon namatay, kinain ng hayina, di yun namang usa, usa tsaka yung leyon nando na sa hayina. Ngayon, kung kinain mo yung hayina, you know what happens next, di ba? Hindi mo dapat kainin ng hayina. So, ganun lang yun. Yung papaya, kinain mo, di nabuhay sa'yo. Namatay ka, naging lupa ka, naging papaya uli. E di, ulit lang yung papaya, eternal. Because the very concept of creation is recreation and recycling. Since the creation of the universe, walang isa patak ng tubig na nadagdag o nabawa sa universe. Nagpapaikot-ikot lang. Kaya yung pawis ngayon na lumalabas sa iyo, pag lumabas ka dyan sa mainit na lugar, baka yun ay dugo ni Cleopatra dati. Nagre-recycle lang ang lahat. Kaya eternal yung life. Hindi talaga napupukasa ang buhay. And the more we understand that, lumalawak ang pag-unawa natin, at nababawasan kung di man nawawala ang takot sa kamatayan. The Gaia principle posits that Earth and its biological systems behave as a huge single organism, an entity that has closely controlled self-regulatory negative feedback loops that keep the conditions on the planet within the boundaries that are favorable to life. In other words, ang buong mundo ay iisang organism according to the Gaia principle. At lahat ng nangyayari dyan is to sustain life, to keep on living. Halimbawa yung mga isda, bakit ang dami-dami, grupo-grupo sila, we call them school. Kasi pagkakinain sila ng malalaking isda, bago mabusog yung isdang yun, ang dami niya makakain. Pero ang mahalaga sa mga isdang maliliit is the survival of their species, not of the individuals. At ganun din yung mga hayop. Kaya sila nagtutulong-tulungan, the survival of the species. Kaya naka-embed, halimbawa, sa mga magulang, lalong-lalo sa mga ina na nagbe-breastfeed, na sobrang magpagmahal sa anak 
to the point na yung mga ibang ina na tatabunan ng mga lindol, sinusugatan nila yung kanilang dibdib at ipinapa uh, sak nila sa kanilang sanggol na bata yung kanilang dugo para patuloy na mabuhay. This is the rule of life. You want your species to survive. Well, the love is individual and personal. It is on lo- also on the level of your species. Napaka-importante maintindihan natin yung mga biological impulses ng tao. Dahil lalo ling lalalim ang pag-unawa natin. Why people do what they do? At maaari tayo ngayon umibig ng mga hindi kaibig-ibig pag naunawa natin sila in their psychological level, in their mental uh, level, in their emotional level. Ganon si Jesus eh. Kaya, si maibigin, mapagtanggap, at maunawain. Habang hindi mo pa yung nauunawa, grupo-grupo, kami-kami, kami, kayo-kayo, nagiging judgmental ka nun and selfish. It is impossible to love. Pagka hindi malaki ang pananaw mo sa creation ng Diyos. In fact, it has been found out that the earth pulsates every 26 seconds. And seismologists have not yet agreed on why. Alam nyo ba na tumitibok ang earth every 26 seconds? Paking, paramdaman nyo, baka medyo mat- makalug kayo ng kuwating ganyan. Kung mala- mayaman ang inyong guni-guni. Kasi hindi naman natin nararamdaman without instruments. Every time that life emerges somewhere, it changes the environment to preserve itself and its environment. Lahat may design. Walang abala, walang sagabal. Meron lang lumilihis-lihis, pamisan-misan, lalo ang tao. The goal of life is to live and give life to others. There is not a single ecology that destroys itself and its habitat, maybe except for humans. Creation is sustained by cycles and recycling. Recycling is natural, automatic, and godly. Pati climate change, mga kapatid. Yung iba na naman, ipinapatakot. Climate change is not the end of the world. Climate change means creation is making recalibrations and adjustments so the world would not end. So, ay, naku, disyembreng, disyembreng, umuulan, bumabagyo. Eh, di magpayong ka. Anong problema mo sa inilipat ng Diyos yung schedule ng mga bagyo eh? Huwag mo sabihin, ay, nag- nawawasak na ang mundo. Maraming beses lang nangyari sa history ng planet except that we were not there to see it. The planet is replenishing itself, adjusting, readjusting, lalo sa pang-aabala ng mga tao sa natural life. If an object, eto na tayo. Ang lahat introduction pa lang uli. Ah. Ngayon, eto na yung message. Ah. Hmm. Ilabas nyo na yung mga baon, yung mga biskwet dyan. If an object, like a massive star, keeps on taking and taking matter by its gravitational pull without giving out, it will become a black hole, a region of darkness and nothingness. Sino sa inyo ang nakarinig na sa black hole? Diba? Pagka daw meron isang napakalaking heavenly body na walang ginawa, kundi i-attract lahat at kainin yung mga katabi niya, mga dumadaan da ang mga heavenly bodies dyan, magiging black hole siya magiging nothing, darkness and nothingness. Now, consider. Consider black holes as contra-life, equal to annihilation and destruction, equal to death and darkness and outsideness, and if you like to make a parallel reading with Scripture, consider black holes as judgment yung ang taas na level na uri ng judgment. Pagkuha ng kuha, pero hindi nagbibigay, black hole ang mangyayari. O bakit naman tinitingnan nyo na agad yung katabi nyo, pinagbibintangan nyo ng black hole siya? O, kung malapit lang yung silya, sisikuhin mo na, ikaw yan, ikaw yan, ikaw yan. If an object, like a massive star, keeps on giving out, ito yung kabaligtaran, ha? it will become a supernova. It will shine most brightly and then explode to spread its matter back to the universe. From these clouds of matter will be formed other new stars and planets and life. So consider supernova as light, as life-friendly, 
as life giving, as giving, as loving, and parallel it with scripture as life, as eternal life. Kasi sinasabi natin kanina, magdagdag tayo ng perspective ng pag-unawa. When explosive supernovas happen, stars distribute both stored up and newly created elements throughout space. A supernova is caused by the last hurrah of a dying massive star. This happens when a star goes out with a fantastic bang. These spectacular events can be so bright that they outshine their entire galaxies for a few days or even months. They can even be seen across the universe. Marami ng mga illustrations ng mga supernova, mga sumasabog ng mga malalaking mga heavenly bodies to give birth to many smaller heavenly bodies. Lesson. As long as you participate in the cycles of life, in receiving and giving, in living and giving life, we will become a supernova. Light. Life. We will explode to become many to spread light and life like Jesus. Acts 13, 47. The Lord gave us the following order. I have made you a light for the nations so that you would save people from all over the world. Anong parallel? Reading? Symbolic reading? Save people from becoming black holes? Because if you have the light of Jesus, you will be giving and you will be loving and you will be telling people and encouraging people to train and be trained to love and give also. So in other words, hindi sila nagiging black hole, nagiging supernova sila. And a supernova gives life and it lives forever by giving life to other little life forms. So we can obey the, Jesus, the teaching of Jesus by teaching people to love and to give love like Jesus. So actually, babalik lang tayo doon sa love eh. Kaya lang nag-excursion tayo sa maraming kung ano-anong mga paliwanag na hindi naman available noong mga unang panahon. Pero ngayon, pwede mo i-consider, hmm, nakakapagbigay sa akin ng additional perspective and insight itong mga scientific things around me to understand scripture better. Matthew 28, 18-20 Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Huwag niyo kasi ilimit yung heaven sa konting ulap-ulap, may mga Greek pillars at may mga nagaharpi-harpi ang mga anghel na walang katawan. Huwag niyo ilimit doon ang ibig sabihin ng heaven. Kasi ang laki-laki ng heavens. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And what was the command of Jesus? To love and to give. So you will become supernovas and not black holes. Ang dami kasing missions eh. Susulat pa, gusto ko po mag-mission sa Cambodia ng two weeks. Gusto ko po mag-mission sa ganito o sa ganoon. Gusto ko po mag-donate nyo naman ako ng pang-support. Ay tatanong ko, okay, sinusunod mo yung utos na go to all the earth. Anong dinadala mo? Teaching ba ni Jesus o teaching ng Pharisees? Nag-mission ka nga, tapos tinakot naman tinakot yung mga tao doon. Ginapos mo na, ginapos sa lo. Eh di hindi teaching ni Jesus. Ang teaching niya, love eh. Forgiveness, acceptance. So sayang naman yung pera ko kung ibibigay ko pa sa'yo. Nagkalat ka pa ng pagiging black hole. So napaka-importante yung unawain ng mga ito on a practical level. And sabi niya, and surely I will always be with you to the very end of the age. Not the end of the world ng sinabi niya, ha? To the end of the age. Bakit ba ini-interpret niya na end of the world? So it is up to the next time cycle. Up to the next galactic era. Di ba? Nature and the universe recycles and recycles. Walang end, ikot ng ikot. The alpha and the omega, the beginning is the end. It's a circle. Walang end. So yung end of the age is just the end of a cycle and then the beginning of another. Para yung mga natakot nun, yung Mayan calendar, end of the world daw, kasi hanggang doon na lang yung bilang ng mga araw sa Mayan calendar. Eh kasi yung Mayan calendar din, cyclical. Nag-end na yung cycle. Hindi ibig sabihin, nag-end ng planeta. Start na naman ang bagong cycle ng panahon. It's important to understand these things para hindi tayo nabubuhay sa takot. Now, black hole can be the closest science to annihilation, to death, or to the religion's hell. 
Maraming dapat para ng pagbasa. Ano nga ba yung hell na yan? Ganun ba talaga yon? Merong isang demonyong may malaking tinidor, tinutusok-tusok ka habang inaapoy-apoy ang gano'n. Well, it is one traditional standard reading. Pero sabi ko nga, dapat tayong magdagdag ng mga alternative reading, integrative reading, para lumawak ang pag-unawa natin, hindi yung nabubuhay lang tayo sa takot. During a creature's earthly lifetime, the creature is an individual. At or after death, the spirit given by the Creator God leaves the physical body and rejoins God Creator's spiritful pool. Nandun lahat. Nandun ang Diyos. Psalm 146 verse 4. When the spirit departs, they, meaning the physical bodies, return to the ground. On that very day, their earthly plans come to nothing. Ano ang nagwawakas? Yun lang earthly plan, not the spiritual one. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only transform from one kind to another. So yung energy natin, yung ating spirit, hindi rin yun nade-destroy. Natatransform lang. Now when you look at quantum mechanical law, information, meaning consciousness or spirit or energy, cannot be created or destroyed. The law of conservation of mass energy says that nothing can be removed from or added to the universe. Bakit natin ito idinidiin para huwag tayong matakot maglaho at mawala na lang bigla. Nawawala lang sa physical dimension pero lumilipat sa spiritual dimension. Whatever is present will always be present. The existence of everything cannot be erased but must continuously exist albeit in different forms like in eternity. Sa philosophy, sinasabi, consciousness that has always been in the universe is a separate and quality distinct from physical actions and not controlled by physical laws. Sa dami ng mga pinag-aaralan natin ngayon, tandaan nyo nalang kahit 5%, okay na yon. Hindi na kayo lugi. At ngayon, tapos na ang first notebook ko, at ang second. Sabi ko sa inyo, maghanda kayo. Ba, matagal ko rin pinag-aralan to, ha? Kaya makinig kayo dyan. A philosopher, si Descartes, on dualism and other religious spiritual viewpoints, assume, sabi niya, that consciousness has been in the universe all along as the ground of being, creator, or component of an omnipresent God. Bakit tayo nagkaganito mga kapatid? Madali naman sana ituro na lang yung mga dati na eh. Di ba? Wala na tayong dapat ipaliwanag. Kasi marami ng mind ngayon nag-grow. And these minds grow out of the church. Marami ng minds ayaw na mag-church kasi napaka super dark ages pa yung mode ng pag-aaral. Na-outgrow na ng maraming minds. So ngayon, kung lumalabas na sa roof ng church yung mga tao, taasan natin yung scholarship para kasali pa rin sila. Itaas yung roof na yan para yung mga malilikot ng isip at marami pinag-iisip ay makita lang, ah, meron naman parang talagang rason pa rin yan within scripture but plumbed with different tools. After death, the spirit creator God lives the spirit. You know, pag sinasabi natin na at and after death, the spirit of creator God leaves the body and it becomes more one with God. Ang tunay na unity with God is when you leave the body. Kasi yung body, impediment yan eh. But, the body is a gift of God. So habang nandiyan pa yan, enjoy it, use it well, at pagtapos na, huwag masyado magdrama. Move on to your next stage. Becoming more one with God and all other spirits that used to inhabit individual physical bodies, that is what will happen, the fellowship of believers na sinasabi nila. 1 Corinthians 15.28 The Son Himself will be made subject to Him who put everything under the Son so that God may be all and in all. Ano ibig sabihin nun? God may be all and in all. Diyan kailangan lumabas sa traditional theology para maintindihan kung anong tunay na sinasabi ng scripture. 1 Corinthians 6.17 But whoever is united with the Lord is one with Him in spirit. Really, technically, one with Him in mind, in thought. Napaka-importante, the spirit that lives the body 
only go somewhere else back to God. The spirit that leaves the body only goes somewhere else back to God. Now, natural life is cyclical, as we have always been saying. Day fades into night and turns into day. One season gradually gives way to the next. Over the passage of time, new generations are born and old ones die. The continuous succession of birth, death, and rebirth permeates nature. At yan ang sinasabi ng Ecclesiastes na there is time for everything. At death, the body simply breaks down and returns to its basic various earthly elements. And the God-given spirit, continuous consciousness, returns to God. The body does not really die. Yung buong unity ng body mo as one body is decentralized. But the components of your body go back to the ground. Hindi naman talaga siya namamatay. Yung mga kinain mong phosphorus, yung mga kinain mong nitrogen, yung mga kinain mong mga vitamins, nagiging lupa din. Hindi naman talaga sila namatay. In fact, magiging source sila ng life ng other living beings. Kaya sabi sa Ecclesiastes 12.7, the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Genesis 3.19 God about man's physical body, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Lagi ko pang inuulit ito mga kapatid, pag may inililibing na mga mahal natin sa buhay, o kinikremate, o kung ano man, para wag kayong masyadong malungkot, isipin nyo, hindi na siya yun. Siya yung physical body na naiwan, pero yung spirit, hindi na yun yun. Hindi na yun yung tunay na espiritu na kaugnay ng espiritu mo. Masyad tayo kasi nagsasentimiento pag inilulubog sa lupa, inilalagay sa loob ng nicho, sinesementohan, o kinikremate. Kasi iniisip natin siya yun eh. But this is the body. Nasabi ni Jesus, the body counts for nothing. Remember, we read that. But your spirit goes on. Look at the spirit, although invisible, don't look at the body, kasi malulungkot ka pag yun ang tinitigan mo. Ayan na siya, ayan ang nanay ko, inilulubog na sa lupa. Hindi na nga siya yun eh. Yan yung kanyang katawan na hinubad na niya yun dahil yung spirito niya nakalaya na mula sa katawan na yun. Think of that. Napakalaki ng ibabawa sa mga lungkot na dinadala ng tinatawag na kamatayan. Most of the elements that make up the human body were formed in stars from supernovas. Tingnan niyo yung braso niyo, kurot-kurotin niyo, is galing yan sa mga bituin. Kasi, di ba, we were made from dust? God created us from dust? Eh, ano ba yung dust? Mga talsik yun ng mga supernova. Mga galing yun sa mga heavenly bodies. Na nung sa Genesis 1, pag binasa nyo talaga, may light, may mga explosion dyan, may mga fireworks. Supernova talaga yung dinidiscuss eh. Hindi lang binigyan ng pangalan na ganun. Kaya dapat nating ma-appreciate from that point of view. For Socrates, our bodies belong to the physical realm. They change... They, they're imperfect, they die. Our souls, however, belong to the ideal realm. They are unchangeable and immortal, surviving the death of the body. And although a close relationship exists between our souls and our bodies, they are radically different entities. Our souls strive for wisdom and perfection. The reason is the soul's tool to achieve this exalted state. So, Saan natin inuubos mga kapatid ang ating mga oras, panahon, time, talent, treasure? Sa gusto ng body o doon sa pag-grow ng mind? Sa pag-grow ng spirit o sa pedicure? Hindi naman masama magpa-pedicure kahit may mga nakadikit pa mga palaka o may ilaw-ilaw, etc. Et Pero huwag nyo naman ubusin yung buong buhay nyo sa body kasi hindi lang tayo body. Ang mahalagang pag-ubusan ng maraming panahon, how to grow the mind, how to prepare the way of the Lord. And for the Lord to gloriously enter our minds, kailan i-prepare mo yung mind mo, buksan mo. At magkaroon ka ng mga tools to understand the words of God, like knowledge, like science, and of course, even theology. Salvation, eternal life through knowledge of the truth. Di ba, you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So, know the truth, the truth will set you free, the truth will give you freedom and eternal life. Where does it start? No. 
understand. Kitang-kita mo eh, na maraming mga nagsasabi, Christian sila, kilala nila si Jesus, pero lagi natatakot, lagi nagagalit. We don't know. Kasi kung talagang we know, we are changed by the renewing of our mind. And the renewing of our mind, brought about by an understanding of God expressed through Jesus, brings about love and peace. Yun lang naman yun eh. Okay, ang religious mo, ang dami-dami mong activities, ministries, peaceful ka ba? At rest ba ang puso mo? Kasi kung hindi, eh hindi yan ang dapat mong inaatupag. Kasi ang pangako ni Jesus, come to me, I'll give you rest. So paano man nalalaman kung tama ang ginagawa mo? Restful. Kung nakakapagod man sa katawan, restful sa isip, restful sa emosyon. Yung pagod lang ang katawan mo, pero hindi ang isip. Pahinga ka. Yun ang bunga ng tunay na pakikipagniig at pakikipag-isa sa Diyos. At lahat ng itong ating mga sinisikap na aralin, related yan. Pagdugtong-dugtongin nyo in your mind. Balik-balikan, aral-aralin. John 8.32, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Set you free from what? From death, from annihilation, from going to the so-called hell, from becoming a black hole, perhaps? In essence, the spirit is eternal. Its individuated earthly inhabitation of a physical body is only for a time, for a season, for a period. Job 33, 4, The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. In other words, pag umalis na yung breath of the Almighty, umalis na yung spirit ko, wala nang life yung body ko. So the body assumes another cycle of existence. Thus, no creature or spirit really dies. Even the body does not really die. It only breaks down into its former basic elements. And it recycles. Everything in nature is cyclical. Matter and energy is constantly being transformed into one form to another. Yung sinasabing, we are changed from glory to glory. Ecclesiastes 1, 4 to 10. Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. Why? Because water recycles. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. Another allusion to water cycle. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, Look, this is something new. It was here already, long ago. It was here before our time. Ang galing nitong Ecclesiastes, sa intindihan niya yung water cycle. Talagang divinely inspired ang wisdom nitong si Solomon. Job 34, 15. All humanity would perish together and mankind, meaning the physical bodies, would return to the dust. The human body and planet Earth are made from the same elements. In fact, we share 97% of our atoms in common with the rest of the galaxy. No creature is separate from other creatures. All are one. Kaya dapat, maibigin ka sa Diyos, maibigin ka sa kalikasan hindi ka nagkakalat ng mga basura, hindi mo pinapolyot ang earth. Minamahal mo ang mga hayop. Kung pwedeng hindi tabasan ang mga damo, huwag mo nang tabasan para may tirahan ng mga paro-paro at ang mga kung ano-ano mga insekto. Yung tinatawag laging development, development, kinakalbo yung mga gubat, yung mga bukid, nilalagyan ng mga semento lahat, kinakanal. Saan titira mga hayop na dating nakatira dyan? Kaya kailangan part of godliness, yung part of, yung love for God's creation na tayo isa lang sa mga creatures dito sa mundo, hindi atin lahat ng mundo kailangan maruto kang share the planet with all the other creatures. It's part of true spirituality. No creature is separate from all other creatures. Pagka naubos ang mga ahas, dadami ang mga palaka. Pag dumami ang mga palaka, magkakaroon ng ecological imbalance. Kung ano-ano mga sakit ang mangyayari. Kaya merong balance dapat yan. 
Huwag mong ubusin ng ubusin. Kung minsan, napaka-indiscriminate ng paggamit natin ng insecticide. Ayaw mo lang kagatin ka ng lawak. Pinatay mo na lahat ng ibang insekto. Hindi ka naman kinakagat ng iba. So, kailangan selective. Magtanim ka na lang mga halaman na pantaboy ng mga lamok. Kailangan bang patayin lahat yung mga yan para kalang hindi nila ma makagat? Meron namang ibang paraan. Be responsible. Yan ang first commandment. Alam niyo ba kung ano talagang first commandment? Sabi ng Diyos kay Adan, take care of the environment. Yeah, take care of the garden. Yun ang first, environment, uh, first commandment talaga. Acts 17, 26 to 27. This is the only universal God, the one who makes all people, whatever their nationality or culture or religion. This God made us all in our diversity from one original person, allowing each culture to have its own time to develop, giving its own place to live and thrive in its distinct ways. His purpose in all his ways that people of every culture and religion would search for this ult ultimate God, grope for him in the darkness, as it were, hoping to find him. Lahat ng tao, lahat ng kultura, lahat ay likha ng Diyos, mahal ng Diyos. Kaya tayo gumagamit ng mga kultura na ating bayan, instruments, dances, hindi lang yung mga western forms. Kasi lahat ng tao, lahat ng kultura, galing yan sa Diyos. Lahat naman ng kultura, merong mga sumamang element, hindi tanggalin mo. Pero may mga gandang element yan, hindi patuloy mong gamitin. Kasi ang Diyos ay nasa lahat ng kultura din. Huwag tayong maniwala sa press release sa mga western missionaries na yung culture lang nila ang godly at ang lahat na demonic. Press release lang yan to justify colonization. Now, what is the first law of ecology? Everything is connected to everything else. Physicist and cosmologist Lawrence Krauss explained in a lecture in 2009 that every atom in our body came from a star that exploded. You are all star dust. And the only way that they could get into your body was if the stars were kind enough to explode. Kayo ba, mga kapatid, nag -e explode para maging part of other people's lives? Halimbawa, yung pera nyo nag-explode, nagpunta sa mga kabaganak nyo, kung kanil-kanino, sa mga nagugutom. Naging part kayo ng buhay nila. Supernova yun. Yung time nyo, nag -e explode ba? Sarili nyo lang o binibigyan yung time yung mga nangangailangan ng inyong attention, ng inyong care? That supernovaness, that truth in Scripture is echoed in the stars. Because everything is one. Life, eternal life, is the life of all creation, not only yours, together with God. Yan naman ang central teaching ni Jesus eh. At nakakatuwang makita na nag -e echo sa astronomy, sa physics, sa chemistry. Because God is author of all this knowledge. Romans 8.10 But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. Read righteousness as supernovaness. Di ba yung paggawa ng mabuti is high religion? Sabi nga, a religion that is acceptable to God is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress. Yun daw ang super religion. To be kind to the needy and to the poor. Hindi yung linggo-linggo, simba ka ng simba. Wala ka man lang matulungan ni isang tao, pero dasal ka ng dasal. Para ano? Aanin mo ang iyong religion. Hindi ka nagiging supernova. Baka maging black hole pa. Kaya importante yan. Nadagdaga ng vocabulary natin, ha? Pang-usig nyo, supernova yan. Huwag ganun, ha? Kailangan hanapin natin yung pagiging... Uh, Oh, Pag-usin nyo pala, black hole yan. 1 Corinthians 2.10 These are the things that God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Now, eternal life is to search for and to understand God. You are in search of eternal life, search for the wisdom of God. Search for the mind of God because the mind is the antenna that connects us to the universe, to God, to consciousness. And it is through your mind, through your thought, that you will connect to eternal life. It is not through a religious ritual. It is not through religious memberships. It is through your mind. Be changed by the renewing of your mind. Dun lahat nangyayari yun. It happens in the mind. 
the mind leads to the path of eternal life. Understand. Huwag lang lulunin sa memoryahin tapos hindi naman talaga naintindihan. 2 Corinthians 3.18 And we all, with unveiled faces, contemplate the Lord's glory. We are all being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. How does one get transformed to become more and more like Jesus? Ano ang pamantayan na nakita mo? Uy, nagiging more and more like Jesus na siya. Pag nagiging more and more loving. Pag nagiging more and more accepting. isang dangkal. Really? Nasaan na yung love? Hindi mo ba siya pwede bigyan ng more space? Nakakulong sa kulungan na. Hindi siya makaikot. Pag pinasok mo siya papalitalikod, handong na siya hanggang bagong taon. Sa sikip. Tapos, hallelujah ka na hallelujah dyan. I-create siya ng Diyos yung aso, yung pusa. Pag nakita ka ng pusa, mainit ang ulo mo, sisipain mo. Tapos sa mo, praise God. Ano yun? Sabi niya, whatever you do to this pusa, you do to me. Kasi bakit creation ko yan eh? Kaya iba yung spirituality sa religiosity. Mga kapatid, maraming spiritual, hindi religious, ni wala sa church. Pero malapit sa Diyos. Marami rin naman nasa church na malapit din sa Diyos. Pero hindi ko mo nasa church, malapit sa Diyos. Jesus came to teach people how to connect and reconnect to God, to the kingdom of God, by going spiritual not religious. Di ba, mga religious people nga, galit kay Jesus, kasi hindi niya pinopromote yung religiosity, ang pinopromote niya, spirituality, ibang para ng pag-iisip. Romans 8, 2, Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death, meaning the law of religion. Be spiritual, not religious. Grace, not the law, is the way to the heart of God. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the spirit of but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yan ba ang nagahari sa ating buhay? Madali namang mateste. Eh. Against such things, there is no law. Jesus showed the way to eternity by skipping the law, by skipping religion. The world thought that obedience to the law, to religion, is key. But love, Jesus, is the key. The door, the way. Matthew 5.20 For I tell you, sabi ni Jesus, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, or unless your righteousness surpasses religion and religiosity, and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Kung religious lang kayo, hindi kayo papasok sa kaharian ng Diyos. More technically, hindi kayo paghaharian ng Diyos. Why? Diba? The kingdom is in us. Hindi ka magiging kingdom kung religious ka lang. Dapat spiritual. Dapat maibigin. Unless you surpass, surmount, and bypass the tenets of legal religion. Sabi niya, you will not enter of God. Matthew 23.13 Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Kita niyo ito napakalino ang sinabi ni Jesus sa mga religyoso. Lagot kayo. Woe to you. Hindi naman kayo pumapasok sa kaharian ng Diyos eh. At hindi nyo rin hinahayaang pumasok yung iba, hinaharangan nyo yung pinto. 
hindi sila makapasok, pinagsasarahan nyo sila. Kasi kayo din, hindi pumapasok. Ang pinagsabihin niya, mga religyoso ha. Malinaw na malinaw na si Jesus, hindi yung mga pagsunod na yan sa mga religious regulation, hindi yung mga do's and don'ts na yan. Kailangan magkaroon ka ng change of heart. Kailangan maghari sa iyo ang pag-ibig. Kailangan makiisa ka sa lahat ng creation through love. At dyan, pag-ahari ang ka ng Diyos. So it is through love, not through religiosity. By taking the path off and to freedom from the law, by the way of love, people find eternal life. 1 John 4, 8 Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So kahit alam mo lahat ang verses sa mundo, if you don't love, you don't know God. But if you love, kahit hindi ka religyoso, hindi mo nasuulo yung mga verses, eh, nando na sa'yo ang Diyos, ang God. Instantly. 1 John 4, 16, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love, lives in God, and God in them. Now here, it's a very important matter, church. Love is force. Love is energy. Hindi lang siya emotion. Yung pag-ibig, ni Julieta kay Romeo, hindi lang yun ang love. Sobra kasi tayo nako, nalilimit sa romantic love eh. Hindi rin filial love na love na magulang sa anak o ng kapatid sa kapatid. Love is force. It is energy. First John 4.12 No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. Malalim na mga salita ito. Rebuhin. Huwag lang yung dating pagkakaunawang i-operationalize natin dito. Sabi ko nun, hindi pa natin nakikita ang Diyos, pero pag umiibig tayo, daig pa natin ang nakita ang Diyos. Kasi tinatahanan tayo ng Diyos. Mark 12, 23, To love Him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Ibigin mo ang Diyos at ibigin mo ang iyong kapwa, mas mahalaga yan kesa sa lahat ng religious activities. Importante. Love is a give-and-take relationship. Love can be compared to the fundamental laws of physics. Since nothing can be added or subtracted from the universe, what is taken should be given away. Energy input should equal energy output. This is ecology. This is balance. This is life. This is spirituality. Very profound. Hindi ko kayo papagurin sa lahat ng ito kung hindi talaga naniniwala kung napakahalagang maunawa. Love is the force and energy that holds creation together. Paano yun? Kailangan pa nating lalong maunawa. Colossians 3.14 Above all, do to your... Do to, clothe yourselves with love which binds all binds us all together in perfect harmony para daw palang paste yan parang glue yung love it binds everything and di ba si Jesus holds everything together you, you see the relationship the law of conservation binds all of the laws of the universe energy input equals energy output you can only take as much as you can give away Giving. Love is the path to connect with life, to God, to eternity. Kung hindi pa natin sobrang nauunawaan siya in a mental level, operationalize lang natin, gawin natin at a physical level, just do it. And then it will become a habit and we will get to understand it more and more. Proverbs 8.17 I love those who love me and those who seek me, find me. We must know. You must know how to love. Just keep on practicing hanggang ma-perfect. Those that take away, take the way of Jesus, those that take the way of love, inherit eternal life. This is a parallel, an alternative, and an integrative reading to the usual theologies. John 17, 3, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, 